We take great pride in the fact that there are times when we can help out. Uh, across the nation and MACA requests as they're known are, are not unfamiliar to us uh, and it's uh, the commitments have already been made to support through border force and working alongside ambulance crews and driving ambulances and I know that the sailors and marines like their soldiers and the aviators also uh, who have also been brought to readiness for this uh, will undertake uh, those tasks with discipline, with professionalism and with cheerfulness, um, even though it means that they're separated from their families over Christmas. It's what an army's for. You know, we are here as the, as, the, uh, uh, as, as, as the last resort for the country. But every time that we are uh, on the front line covering for industrial action or anything else, it means we're not doing our day job and our skills are running down. And these are young soldiers who are not on high rates of pay and haven't had pay rises. So, you know, it is a challenge to, to sustain our professional ability and also cover that. But ultimately, that's what the government wants to use us for. That's why we're here. We have several hundred people who, who have been notified that they may be needed uh, in the face of industrial action across a number of different areas. And we've already trained several hundred alongside the Navy and the Army. And, and, and it's something that we're ready to do because we, we, we need the country to keep moving. We need our borders and ports kept open. We need the, that emergency services to continue running. And we recognise the role that we play as the, as the armed, armed forces. We continue to maintain uh, protection around the United Kingdom uh, in the on-call forces, both at sea, the quick reaction alert from the Royal Air Force soldiers, we have the people who are deployed around the world. We continue to have ships deployed in all of, main, all of the major oceans, and they are also separated from their families. So we are used to this. So I've served uh, on operations on a number of Christmases, and in some respects, they're some of the most um, remarkable memories I have because of the sense of family that you generate on those overseas deployments and sharing Christmas with, with your mates um, from the battalion or the regiment or the units that you're serving with. But I'm also very conscious that you won't be at home, that you'll be missing your families. And I just want to reassure you that you may be out of sight, but you are very much in our mind and in our prayers. And I want to express my gratitude to all of you for the dedication, the service and the commitment that you're showing. And to thank you for taking time away from your family to serve your country. I've also got uh, thousands of people in the UK and overseas who will be on duty this Christmas. Uh, whether they're serving on operations in, in the Middle East or whether they're uh, preparing to launch a quick reaction alert aircraft, uh, delivering um, uh, air transport services, keeping our airfields open, keeping our air traffic uh, alert. Uh, all of that continues over Christmas and New Year. So whilst we've now had the additional burden of, the, uh, of supporting other parts of government and public services, this is something that we have to face every Christmas and New Year that some of our people will not be there with their families and friends and loved ones. Uh, I myself have done a number of Christmases. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel.